Today we have with us Dr. Jay Eaker from the BioSoul Integration Center. He's a chiropractor, but not in the traditional sense. Through the process of entrainment, he's able to work with his clients remotely, resulting in fantastic outcomes. We chat about his book entitled, If It Didn't Hurt. It's like, open up into the pain, welcome it in. Working through this pain is the window to your soul. Now, in my opinion, this is a very unique perspective of, of something that we all face. This book and its concepts definitely are worthy of a deep dive. I love this discussion, and I hope you will too. Don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. Hey, thank you all so much. Paradoxically, the energy uh, that we need, the information that we need to move to the next stage of our evolution is found in the pain, in the problem. The universe, God, whatever, is putting this pain or problem in front of our face. Like, that's the portal. That's the portal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I bring my attention to the sensations in my body, and I allow everything that I find there to be there, uh, meet it with kind attention, and then I let my eyes rest on the person that I'm working with. And as soon as I do that, there are sensations that come to the surface in me that say, hey, pay closer attention to these sensations. And um, those sensations start to resolve in my body, usually having something to do with my heart again. And then it's apparent that something is resolving in them too. So you're yeah. a chiropractor from outside of Boulder, Colorado. Right, yes, this is And true. you have also been described, I was reading through some of your stuff, um, someone had written about you, I guess, in your, your book, uh, which we'll mm. talk a little bit about a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, so this particular person described you as a masty, master body worker, an mm. energy healer, and a kundalini uh, magician. <laughs> so that right. all sounds very interesting. I look forward to diving into all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I kind of want to just hop right in. Um, would you be able to tell me a little bit about something like a powerful experience that you mm -hmm. personally, you know, that happened to you or maybe something that you witnessed, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that's, you know, impactful, surprising, fascinating. Yeah. Um, maybe as it relates to the work that you do, you know, so, so much of this metaphysical work, this energy work uh -huh. can be just kind of mind blowing. Right. And. It's supposed to be I, I, I like to hear yeah. those I like to hear those stories sure and, and so much of this healing work is just that yeah I got a couple stories a few stories I could share with you for sure a story that was I maybe the impactful story as it relates to my work especially is what sort of cinched the deal that led me down this path uh well there are many stories actually along the way all through my life that led me down this path but um, I was in chiropractic school towards the end of my chiropractic school. And I was, you know, in a rough spot. I, uh, I did everything hard. We did everything hard. I did everything hard. I was hard on myself, partied hard, uh, was hard on other people. Um, and I had this like low back pain that kept coming back due to some childhood injuries, physical injuries, but also psychological injuries, I think. Uh, but I had this low back pain that kept coming up. And here I was at the end of chiropractic school. And I'm thinking I'm someone who's supposed to help people, you know, heal from right. their pain. And, and you have the pain. Uh, I'm feeling like a fraud because I, I'm, you know, I'm totally okay, I haven't figured this thing out. And so I started looking at some other things and, uh, yeah, I guess in a in a a moment of extreme rage, I I I it was in pain one day and just like yelled at this back pain, you know, like what do you effing want from me? And then there was silence and then something happened like tears came. And after that, uh there was a realization that sort of crept in which was that I needed help. And I hadn't really even gotten to the point of asking for help. But that day, a friend of mine suggested I go see this woman who does this network chiropractic thing. And uh, I went to her and, you know, she connected with some, some part of me. And I kind of like 
decided to let her work on me, you know. Uh, but probably about, and I was skeptical the whole time. I grew up in a, you know, I'm from a conservative Christian household in Nebraska. I grew up on a farm. The kind of chiropractic that I was used to was regular conventional chiropractic, popping and cracking, you know. Okay. And this woman was just taking gentle contacts along my spine. I was in an open room with multiple people who were like, sometimes wiggling around and making sounds, you know, it's just like, what, what is this counting the counting the visits, right? You know, before I could get the heck out of there. But after about, you know, some something started happening, I started to feel things happening in my body, feeling energy moving, my breath would change on its own, something was happening about 15 sessions, I remember, because like I said, I was counting those sessions. Wow. Uh, but okay. after about 15 sessions, one day I walked out of there and like, I had an awakening experience of sorts. I mean, the, the sky, the, you know, the, the color of the trees was more vibrant and the sky was sort of like vibrant in a way that I hadn't remembered. And I had this amazing feeling moving through my body. I felt 300 pounds lighter. I had this amazing feeling moving through my body where the, like energy was, you know, moving from the, the, the back pain, the place in my back that usually was killing me through my heart. And under the influence of this amazing feeling, I had, you know, I was thinking things like, wow, I have a lots of opportunity here. I got a great girlfriend. I have a great, my parents are great. There's all these great opportunity in life, which was uh, different from how I usually was. Okay. I definitely had been much darker, more cynical person prior to that. And again, under the influence of this amazing feeling, I was like, you know, thinking about all the great possibilities. And um, looking back, uh, that I recognized that feeling as, as gratitude and awe. At the time, I was like, what is this amazing feeling? You know, <laughs> right, right. I, didn't, I didn't know what it was. But at the time, you know, I was looking back, I realized I was filled with just gratitude and awe at life. And, um, and a, a sort of veil was removed from my eyes. Like I could suddenly see if I was having trouble in life, I could see how it was largely of my own making. It was how I was being in life. And, um, and that was, I could also see how due to my ignorance, I couldn't see that before somehow. And due to my ignorance, I had, you know, was hurting myself and hurting others. And I felt the pain of that and felt this sort of grief of that as well as this, this, um, gratitude and awe and everything and um so it, you what know kind of it, work was she doing to you what? well like i said it was this it was this network chiropractic thing okay and that's a, a form of chiropractic it's a technique that stemmed out of chiropractic it's uh well, it sounds like so like an energy work i mean i know they do mm -hmm. energy it's work and very... chiropractic um i mean i i actually go to a chiropractor it's very interesting mm -hmm. um i um didn't really cross paths with many chiropractors until about two months ago. And I started mm -hmm. going and then I got put in touch with you. And then I got put in touch with another person um, mm -hmm. all within the chiropractic uh, realm. And um, both you and this other person talk about, um, is it this Donald Epstein? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. And yeah. He's the, he's the guy that created network spinal analysis. These days it's called network spinal. And I should say, a disclaimer, I haven't had a lot of a connection with that community uh, in the last few years. I mean, this is how I, this is the, the, the avenue that I practiced, ended up practicing as a result of the story I was telling you that kind of cinched the deal for me and started me down that path. And so I've been practicing for 20 years now. And that, you know, that definitely is the, the gateway that I started with for the first 10 years or so. So I just want to make that disclaimer there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly what's happening in that world these days, but network spinal, network spinal analysis, network chiropractic is what that uh, technique is called. Created by Donald Epstein. And, and your work is kind of developed from that and morphed into, you know, your, your own version. Yeah, there's just, you know, some things that happened over the course of the years. It is, uh, you know, it's like maybe a, a, a musician, you know, you play the scales 10,000 times and you play songs 10,000 times. And next thing you know, you can sort of like freestyle. And um, mm. <clears throat> uh, there's some, I was 
kind of being called to the next level of my own evolution. And I discovered mindfulness meditation through uh, another person who'd been in the network, like a network chiropractor. He introduced me to mindfulness meditation and that just sort of like taking responsibility on another level for your experience. And that kind of gave it, that kicked off a, a new awareness that turned into this thing that I do now. I mean, I had always in working with people always often felt like, Oh, we're, I want to go, I want to go this direction. I want to go here. I want to do this, but I didn't know necessarily where it fit into the technique, you know? Okay. And uh, after kind of discovering mindfulness meditation and, and something that this uh, practitioner, this man, his name's Lawrence Conlon, something he said to me uh, during a retreat that he was giving these retreats and helping practitioners like myself uh, work on people with more presence, you know, have more presence while working with people. And he said, follow the river of chi. And I was like, huh. I know what that is. I know what you're talking. Believe it or not, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, you know, it had it was this thing that had been calling me from time to time when I was working with people. To it was calling me to sort of go in this direction or that direction, but I didn't know where it fit into the technique, and so I wouldn't go there because I was like, I don't know what this is. But um, it was the river of chi uh, that was calling me, and when he said that, it was like, oh, I know how to do that, and it sort of gave me permission to sort of see to see the river of chi and feel the river of chi, the, the sort of um, life force that animates everything uh, and certainly so connects me. When you're working on your, with. when you're working on your, um, your clients, patients, your people, mm -hmm. do you, can you feel and sense that river of chi and, and kind of know where to direct that subtle touch? Yes, that's the, yep. Um, so what I do is, uh, now we're talking about my hands-on work that I do at my office that I've been doing for most of my professional life. I do do online stuff. And as it turns out, it's the river of chi uh, works across, uh, right. across the, the interwebs. As strange as that is, you're exactly uh -huh. right. Yes. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so I bring my attention to the sensations in my body and I allow everything that I find there to be there, uh, meet it with kind attention. And then I let my eyes rest on the person that I'm working with. And as soon as I do that, there are sensations that come to the surface in me that say, hey, pay closer attention to these sensations. And when I do that, <clears throat> uh, and bringing my hands on or around the person's body, you know, with the right, with the right amount of force and the right combination, um, those sensations start to resolve in my body, usually having something to do with my heart again. And then it's apparent that something is resolving in them too. Something's happening in them too. Their breath changes. They have an emotional release. Um, things shift in their body too. The Institute of Heart Math um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a statement that they had was research says that the coherent state and its benefits can be transferred directly from the nervous system mm -hmm of one person, you, to the nervous person, right. nervous system of another person. Yes, your, your exactly. The person you're working through, uh, through in training, but through the entraining bio field. Right. Which is awesome. Apparently. And what I love so yes. much about um, the HeartMath uh, Institute is that they put a ton of money in research right. and data. Right. And so a, a lot of the uh, you know, the scientists that talk about all of this weirdness, this, this world of weirdness, <laughs> the woo woo, they, <laughs> world, they, they yes. often refer to, um, you know, this, this data that's collected mm -hmm, by mm -hmm. this company. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're, they're kind of the first, you know, I was over the years heard about them and then looked into their research and, and yeah, pleased to sort of like, Hey, there's someone that's actually, you know, got some research doing some collecting some data and doing some research that sort of explains this phenomenon that I have this direct experience of that entrainment phenomenon and right yeah how systems nervous systems can communicate information that way yeah I mean do you know of any studies offhand I mean I mean I know there's a lot of them but do you know right. any well enough to um kind of regurgitate them and uh only the one, I mean, I think you started to mention there only 
uh, stuff that I've looked into in the past around the Heart Math Institute. Donald Epstein and his Wise World seminars, uh, they've done some research, but this, this um, Heart Math Institute was the closest I could find that sort of spoke to what I was experiencing. And uh, I can only say, you know, what, I guess what they found, one of the one or two of the studies that they found talk about basically what you just said that um uh well they talk about a a state the a physiological state that people can get into that happens sometimes spontaneously with folks uh whereby their physiology becomes coherent um and they talk about how that what's that called uh, psychophysiological just physiological co coherence there's like two levels of it there's physiological coherence that can be sort of induced by bringing your attention to your heart center and and um, creating sensate creating feelings of acceptance and appreciation and gratitude Okay. And that creates the state, this, this physiological, uh, physiological state of coherence in their body. Um, and then, and then, so they discovered that that can be sort of induced by, you know, mindfulness, sort of mindfulness like uh, practices. And when you add that, the, the heart piece, when you add the appreciation, gratitude piece, it kind of takes it to a whole other level. They call that psychophysiological coherence, where the where everything starts to entrain or become coherent with the heart and the heart, the rhythm of the heart. And I don't know exactly how they measure this, but uh, you know, they say that the heart has its own brain. We tend to think that the brain is running the body, the brain and the nervous system, but they say that the the heart, things like the gut and the heart, these are like important nexuses in the in the body where lots of information exchange is happening and actually the heart has a, a magnetic uh field signal that a field that's much stronger actually than the brain and in this psychophysiological coherent state things start to uh, align the physiology the physiology aligns with the heart and in that state they found that that state can be transferred from one person to another either through touch or even if someone is in uh, close proximity and then, and then that signal that coherent signal can then be measured in their system yes. so uh that was the kind of research that and i and then the at. next step beyond that of course is even if they're not close yeah yeah so um, they they seem to d discover that there's a field that gets created that this this coherent state kind of like uh uh conditions the field and that the field then people who come in contact with that field then that they're more apt or more have more capacity to get into that that psychophysiological state of coherence themselves yes but then can you also send that field that intention that vibration out like a lot, a lot of the energy work is done remotely. Is, mm -hmm. is what you're talking about actually different than, than remote energy work? Is what you're talking about actually needs to be within a, you know, a, a fairly close uh, distance from, mm -hmm. from the person? I mean, so yes, do the that. research, do the research. I think they, they measured like a certain distance away. They like measured their, their instruments only, you know, they, they had, you know, in a, a laboratory setting or, or whatever, you know, their instruments showed that that would at least six feet. Yes. I've heard, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that was only because the, like, you know, their, maybe their instruments would only reach that far, or, right, uh, right, you know, right. but it actually goes so, well beyond that. So, but, you know, there's evidence uh, in, you know, through quantum physics and things like that, this entanglement theory, I think, and things like that, that right. uh, there's connection and things that go farther than that that makes me it makes me think of a, a book the that i read the um the secret life of plants okay. you ever heard of that I have uh, the secret life of plants this guy 
he was studying, I think he was trying to create like the polygraph machine or some version or something like the polygraph machine. And he ended up discovering that his plants, well, he was, he ended up discovering that his plants were giving off uh, a signal when he would, when he would harm them. If he would like burn one with a cigarette or something, it would give off the signal. And then he discovered that the plants would, uh, would also give off a signal if he even thought about harming them. Mm. And there's stuff in there that talks about how uh, people's plants and other things too. Uh, I can't remember the details, but how they, they uh, had these responses when, when people were far away, like, you know, right. on the other side of the country and things. So, yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's really nuts how all of that works, but uh, you know, I, I don't know how it works, but it's not, but it appears to be a thing. <laughs> it does. It, it's definitely a thing. <laughs> it's mind blowing for sure. So I want to back up yeah. just a bit um, and get more into like the, the core of, uh, of, of what you do. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, if someone came in to get, let's say someone came in personally, you know, face to face, mm -hmm. or I guess it really doesn't matter. Sure. Someone maybe, maybe is zooming um, mm -hmm. your services. What, what is it you do? How mm -hmm. does it help? What can they expect? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I guess a, a question that people ask of things like um, network chiropractic and other alternative alternative um, techniques like that uh, is, you know, does it work? But um, I think the question, you know, it depends on what what does work mean exactly. Um, does it mean, you know, just to make symptoms go away? Uh, or does it mean something else? And sort of the, the perspective or the paradigm that I'm coming from is that I think we're here to, on this planet, to come into relationship with our soul's gifts and our soul's essence, such that we can sort of like share the, share our soul's gifts and our soul's essence through these physical bodies onto this physical plane and serve the planet and people on it with those gifts. I, I think the planet and everyone on it need need us to do give our gifts you know mm -hmm. and so that's kind of the paradigm that i'm working from and in my experience i feel like there's always life is always kind of nudging us in that direction there's like pressure kind of the river of chi it's like being in a river there's pressure to evolve you know into our authentic selves again which is this version of ourselves in which our soul's essence and soul's gifts are integrated in, into these physical bodies. Um, and so there's always pressure. Life is always nudging us towards that. And so a short way to sort of describe what I do is, is I feel like it is sort of lubricating that process, kind of okay. uh, softening the resistance, softening the resistance that's in us that we've picked up. Um, hmm. So that, so that what's trying to happen, so that what life is trying to get us to evolve towards can happen more, more smoothly, more quickly with our participation, with more participation from us, from the client. Uh, along the way, you know, there are, again, we're talking about integrating the physical with that. So, you know, that does involve, uh, involve uh, releasing tension and you know our body feeling better and working better and our posture changing and it also bleeds into the sort of mental emotional spiritual realm like the the you know realizing becoming aware of the thoughts the tapes that we're always telling ourselves whether those are productive or not productive uh giving ourselves we put a limit on the range we put a limit on the range and depth of emotion that we give ourselves permission to feel and so we start to feel a wider deeper range of emotion um well, i've never so heard that analogy but i think that's a fantastic one it's like the lubrication you know trying to get <laughs> us to that point at, um right and for you i guess when you you said you had 15 session and 15 sessions before you felt that sense of uh, mm -hmm. uh what was was it gratefulness is that like yeah heart, grateful heart like gratitude and awe and so, yeah. so you, you and were it, a tough a tough shell to crack it seems uh, yeah, I guess you could say that I, I was a tough shell. Because, like I said, because I come sometimes, from, yeah, sometimes you go into these 
sessions, um, you know, the many different methodologies. Um, and it'll be like the first time it, it's like, mm -hmm. there's something mm -hmm. hugely different. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure each time you did, you know, work with that person, you felt, mm -hmm. um, much better and things shifted and it, it was mm -hmm. great. But then on the 15th time, it was like, it got to your inner self and it opened you up and it was a magical mm -hmm. experience. And that's when you were like, right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. You're right. I was um, a tough nut to crack. I was very tough skeptical. nut to crack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I think that's great. You know, there, I, there is, and, and that it's like, I had to go through a, there's a process to get to that place. It's not like you get there. There's some part of you that, that it's like, I don't know, throwing a, one of those hooks, you know, with a rope on it or something like throwing okay. that thing up on a roof. You know, it's like, uh, you, you, there's part of you that gets connected to that place. And then more and more of you has access to that, but there are still parts of you that are not quite there yet. And so then you kind of go through the process of trans of transforming those parts and Fixed that part practice. and there are different parts of the process that are not that are not uh all you know bliss and and uh you know uh rainbows <laughs> well here's what i think is so. important when you get to that point when you get to that awareness you can then look back and reflect that you're not in that place like that you have you have achieved that once before and you know yeah. what you would like to where you would like to meet at in the future. Yeah. So yeah, just just getting to the point of awareness is like the first step and is almost the most important step because without mm -hmm. awareness, you really you're kind of oblivious. You yeah. don't know what direction yep. you go toward. Awareness um, has to be there, yes. Um, so you wrote a book. I did. Yes. I did write a book. Yes. Um, about and I think it's it's very interesting. Um, I mean, I haven't I haven't read it. I've gone through parts of it. The premise sure. of it is fantastic, but it's about getting through the tough stuff. And so yeah. you mentioned uh, pain is bound up intelligent energy. Uh, mm -hmm. Open up, open into the pain, welcome it in, and make contact with our soul's gift. Mm -hmm. That's that's a huge that's a big pill to yeah. swallow. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, most people want to avoid pain and you're saying, yep. jump in and yeah. open up to your soul's gift. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, and someone wrote a little bit about it and said, it's mentioning that if you continue to process your pain in healthy ways, instead of avoiding it or shoveling it away, as most people do, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can propel yourself into greater heights than you thought possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just think that's a very cool take, a very unique take on, on a diff difficult subject. Mm -hmm. topic. Yeah. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about? Uh, sure. Um, I mean, I, I kind of was starting to talk about that. I mean, there are parts of the process. I mean, the truth is, is that life is not messing with us. Life and our bodies are not screwing with us uh there are themes that show up along the healing journey and there are themes that are common to everyone's experience and part of that journey often is that sort of like a squeeze point like life makes us stop and pay attention and take we need to and take a closer look and sometimes we are not so apt to do that people want to people want to avoid the, the uncomfortable stuff people want to go for the bliss and the expansion all the time but um, it doesn't actually work like that. It's a cycle. In order to get to the bliss and the expansion, you have to go through contraction. And often life will say, all right, you're not, you know, it's at crucial points in our journey. Uh, if life wants us to pay attention, often some pain or challenge or problem, whether that's physical, mental, emotional, or whatever will come up. And it's designed to get us to stop, pay attention to what we're doing, and pay closer attention to our bodies and our lives. And um, actually, kind of like paradoxically, the energy uh, that we need, the information that we need to move to the next stage of our evolution is found in the pain, in the problem. Um, wow. 
people are, you know, we might, you might like say a prayer, like God, you might have your, your vision board or whatever, you know, you make your vision board. This is what I want life to look like. And life I think says, okay, let's do that. Uh, and in order to become the person who's going to receive that, who can receive that, you're going to have to become a different person. You're not the person right now who can receive that. And, um, you know, we often think like, oh, we do a thing like that, say a prayer, do the vision board or whatever, God, universe, I want this. And then this pesky pain or problem or challenge comes up. And we're like, you know, gosh, darn it, get that thing out of the way so that I can like keep moving towards my goal. When actually the universe, God, whatever is putting this pain or problem in front of our face, like that's the portal. That's the portal. Mm -hmm. It contains everything that you need to become the person that you need to become to right. um, receive what you just asked for. So um, your, your daughter was sick a, a while back. Yes, yes. How, how did that play into all of this? Yeah, good question. Well, it was like, uh, I think life, you know, getting me to walk my walk and talk my talk. Um, mm. uh, I'm always real, telling the people. The real test. You, you, yeah. You were faced with the real test. Sure. Yeah. I'm always telling people when hard things happen, like the, my advice is, all right, what is this bringing up? What, let's trust it. Give it permission to be felt. Uh, trust that life is not messing with you. You know, um, whatever you're feeling as a result of this pain, that is the solution. We're going to go towards that with an open heart. I'm always, you know, uh, that's my, that's my guidance to people. And here this, this, op, this thing happened and, you know, <clears throat> it was, there was sorrow and fear and anger that just sort of dropped me to my knees. You know, I, right. your mind goes nuts with the sea. She's fine now, by the way, she's just happy and healthy. She was one and a half and uh, your mind goes nuts. You know, you hear the C word and it's like, you can't help but wonder if she's going to die, you right. know, and your mind. And so I said, as opposed to like really pushing that away, I said, all right, I'm going to give permission for whatever happens to happen. This is what I want to see happen. I want to get through this and I want her to be alive universe. That's what I want. And I give up control. That's what I want. I give up control. I will go through whatever with her all the way to the end if necessary and feel everything fully as fully as I can. Um, and, you know, just in the stuff that we were going through, she didn't have to die, that she didn't have to, like, face pain that she couldn't do anything about. Uh, she came out the other side just fine. Um, but the stuff that was, you know, the barrage of feeling that was happening to me and me saying, I'm going to, uh, you know, meet that with full awareness to the extent that I hit with an open heart, it transformed me. It changed me. You know, my yeah. heart opened up to parts of myself that it puts you in touch with parts of yourself that have been laying dormant for years. Maybe, maybe stuff that you picked up in this lifetime. May, if you believe in other lifetimes, stuff that I picked up in other lifetimes or stuff that's in my lineage, you know, sorrow and uh, grief of parents through my lineage and, and things like that, that never got really processed. And I like processed it and it transformed me. You know, it, it uh, opened me up to a whole other bandwidth of my myself. Gotcha. Uh, and out of that came this, I think one of the main things later on, like I suddenly had this, you know, overwhelming urge to write a book. Hmm. And I don't know right. if anyone who out there who's ever written a book, you got to have a, you got to have a good reason that's constantly pushing you to finish a project like that, you know? And so and uh, something had been unleashed. What's the in, name of the book? Uh, if it didn't hurt, how to yes. resolve your pain and discover your life purpose. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So no, I think that's, that, I, I think the whole topic of the book is very important. People run mm -hmm. from pain and yeah, maybe they can run to your book. Um, I guess let me back up a little bit. So I, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to a chiropractor now. He's mm -hmm. more of the, um, you know, the hands-on. Um, conventional? He, Is it like more well, conventional? No. He's not conventional. 
Okay. He, I actually have been very impressed by him. That being said, the work that he's doing on me is more conventional. Mm. So yes, the processes he works with me on are, you know, spine, like neck. Popping and cracking involved? Is he just Yeah, exactly. Spine? He grabs my neck and goes <laughs> and all that good stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, I, I, you never get used to that. Um, <laughs> but my neck always feels better afterwards. And my, right. you know, I, I definitely am uh, feeling a lot better now than I was a couple mm. months ago when I started mm -hmm. going to him. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, that being said, so I wanted to, I, I had congratulations. This, yeah. 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 So I, you know, I didn't have anything that was horrible by any means, but, um, but it was uncomfortable enough that I knew that I needed mm -hmm. some, um, little TLC in that department. Yeah. Um, but so he, he put this like little electric device on my neck and mm -hmm. then another sort of diodes or whatever a little further mm -hmm. down my spine and then they have this little thing that that reads mm -hmm. the conductivity mm -hmm. of the electrical sure. current passing sure. through yeah um right what is that about and it's, so supposedly it um tracks the electrical current from um vertebrae to vertebrae and okay didn't know if that's kind of a instrument or a practice that you're familiar anything having to do with subtle um subtle electrics or you know uh -huh. subtle energy in the body i'm fascinated by it and mm -hmm. when instruments um by a i guess in this case a little bit more conventional um chiropractor pick up subtle energies in the body mm -hmm. i'm like that's cool i'd like to know more <laughs> right um do yeah. you know anything about that particular device is that a pretty standard thing yes i'm familiar with that i used to have one of those Okay. I used to, I used to do that in my office. So what's the, what's the idea? behind? Uh, well, it's been a long time. I, over the years, I dropped this sort of analytical tools like that, okay. especially once I, once I sort of had a, a direct sense of the river of chi in my own body and could sort of like, you know, feel it in a person's body. Uh, I, over time, I ended up dropping those kinds and of I tools. I think that's fantastic. But, I, you know, I'm still stuck. I grew up in, well, I didn't believe in any of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Until I went to that particular event. Me neither. Robbins had opened my eyes. Yeah, well, you know, and I, I, I a large part of me is still stuck in mm. that place. Mm -hmm. Be, and all of this, I mean, I obviously know it all works and, enter, you know, all this energy remote work. It, it, it's fantastic mm -hmm. and it, it's real and it's a thing. Um, but I still, there's that large part of me that still wants to see some sort of um, clinical evidence mm -hmm. or statistical evidence sure. that sure. that supports mm -hmm. these right. other subtle energy findings. Right. Um, so how do you, what do you feel? You feel like that is, that's doing the trick? You think that that's serving <laughs> me well? I don't think it's serving me well, no. You don't think so? <laughs> Well, as far as like giving you some sense that things are some proof that things are getting better. Oh, well, yeah, I guess so. But in terms of mm -hmm. having the, the skepticism like you, it sounds like you just dropped all of the, uh, the, the you you went hard in the other direction. I went um, hard in the you know that what you're there are lots of chiropractors and people actually who do network care and other sort of more woo woo things that use tools like that. Uh, all sorts of things uh, speaking of the heart math Institute, like uh, heart rate variability. That's one that people use uh, this thing yes. that you are talking about this uh, bilateral weight scales, how much weight we're putting on our bilaterally or we're balanced. Uh, there's all sorts of ways to measure measure whether or not there's this coherent thing happening in the nervous system and okay. and i, I kind of go off of my i'm trying to i'm trying to give people an experience it's sort of like i guess it's the lens i see the world through i had this experience i had a direct felt sense of transformation in my in myself and, and you don't need that's the what other got me start well that's what got me started it's like i want other people to experience that and um you know so i i meet people who are kind of like who in general more and more who can hit the ground running with that who have who can are ready for to sort of have an experience in their body and be able to trust that yeah uh, yeah i probably could sort of serve more people if i did those if i did those things 
but over the years, I've just lost interest in trying to convince. I, I think that's fantastic. At all. And see, yeah. my thing, I think, I think, uh, I feel like my mission is almost to help convince. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds know? like that. You're one of the people that are bridging the gap for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. come on, guys. I mean, because all my old old friends, they're you know, contractors, financial advisors, uh, attorneys, yeah. doctors, and yes. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm like, okay, ch- check this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come on, right. guys. Right. right. Yeah. Um. It, yeah, that's a. Uh, I under. I yeah. I know what you're saying, and. Uh, yeah, I, I, people that are ready, you know, I, I, what I'm trying to do is put it out there on my website, my book, you know, kind of like put all that out there. And so that the people that jive with it will find me. Yeah. I found in the past, you know, I, I tried to, to kind of like bridge the gap between kind of the more conventional chiropractic world, people, people. Um, yeah. And what I found was despite those tools, you know, there's a thing that happens where people are being called at some point to feel more, actually. People, you know, they want their pain to go away. They want the symptom to disappear so that they can get back to living their old life in a way. But that's not how life, that's not how it works. Life is nudging us towards our evolution. Uh, And so in doing the work that I was doing, people started to feel more, like feel a wider range of emotion, maybe feel yeah, a wider range of emotion yes. that there were programs that said that's not safe to feel. And right. despite whether or not this graph was showing them that they were getting better, they were starting to feel parts of their shadow and they were like, get me out of here. <laughs> I know? understand what so, you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, it could definitely be a roller coaster. I mean, a lot of this, many of these energetic methods, people just, start bawling because it, it, it allows their right. emotion to come right. forward. And it does yeah. present in many times, you know, many cases, uh, a shadow. Um, yeah. You know, the, the yeah, they're going to come into relationships. You don't necessarily want to bring up, but boy, it feels great after it's passed. Right. Right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people's physical pain, back pain, knee, whatever pain, physical pain in your body is bound up energy. A lot of that has a, a lot of, there's a, no, unprocessed emotional component to probably every physical pain that anyone has um so do you have any thoughts about like like the medical arena and wellness uh like moving forward like what Mm -hmm. direction we're headed Mm -hmm. um didn't know if you had any strong thoughts about that or you just kind of like well you know uh coming from the chiropractic world there's this like aversion to the medical world. And I, I, I've been watching that in me. I have that in me. Um, and then this thing happened with my daughter, you know, and I saw like, wow, you know, we looked at alternative stuff. We looked at like these, you know, um, alternative uh, clinics in Germany or, or other places, but no one could say what, what the medical world could say, which was, we know what this is. We know that if your daughter does, if we do this, your daughter's going to have a 95% chance of being just fine. You know, none of the alternative folks could say that, right. you know, and maybe that's because they, they don't have, uh, they're not accepted and don't have the resources to, to study that, you know, to do studies and things like that. I don't know. Right. <clears throat> maybe they would know more, but, um, you know, and, and, and being in the hospital with my daughter, like, I don't know, I saw like, they're doing spiritual work of a sort there too. And so I think we need, we need both sides. I think they, you know, they're coming from the medical world is coming from a certain, a certain thrust, which is um, trying to restore people to where they were before. I think life is kind of there's a way in which life is sort of nudging us towards our evolution and then some way there is no going back Uh, but they they uh they have a an important you know if 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 a process that you've gotten yourself into is if you're not going to live through it but they can save your life and give you another chance to to learn the lessons then great they're good at keeping people alive you know enough and um we need both 
And well, I don't I, know. I don't I, know I've somewhere seen... if they're going to meet in the middle. Some if they're going to meet together somewhere someday. I'm not exactly sure. Technology maybe maybe it'll morph into something that's a uh, you well, know. Well, I, I do. I, do, I definitely see more of a kind of a, a meeting, more of a common ground. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'll ever be you know totally centered one or the other, but mm -hmm. you know it's going to they're going to be weighted for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's so nice seeing even um like the educate nurses educational programs have mm -hmm. alternative programs that are part of their traditional teachings now which you know There's healing healing touch uh, nurses are can oh yeah do healing yeah touch, I mean, I, and that's I, an energetic I actually uh, interviewed quite a few nurses mm -hmm. you know on yeah. on uh the global healing hub that uh -huh. do energy work and and it's a part of you know, it's a part of the hospital. Yeah, right. Um, and there's a lot of hospitals around here that actually offer all sorts of energy work. And even mm -hmm. um, um, insurance companies are now covering things like cranial sacral therapy and um, mm -hmm. like things that you would right. be astonished that they're covering. And the reason is, mm -hmm. is because they work. So, and and also I, I think as these uh, this equipment, um, is able to uncover more and sense more of the the subtle energies. Right, that'll become more and yeah. more apparent. That like, hey, right, it's real. It's it's mm -hmm. not a woo woo mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Like, there mm -hmm. really is like energy emanating off of us. We just right. have a hard time seeing it, except for the right. special few. Right, right. Um, and I think as that comes to the forefront. Um, you know, it's going to merge closer and closer together. Uh, yeah, that, think... That's my, that's my hope. Yeah. But mm -hmm. meanwhile, there's many things you can do in a very safe way that there really is not much focus on at all. Um, you know, a lot of this energy work and, and, and again, mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to do is kind of promote these different methods that, mm -hmm. you know, in many cases you can go home and, do yourself and, mm -hmm. and create some amazing shifts within your body sure. just by having a certain perspective and having certain tools and, and, uh, um, yeah, sure. Yeah. But then you also have these crazy wizards out there as well that can work <laughs> some magic and, you know, of course right. you're not going to see any commercials about them. Well, you might see commercials about them, but I wouldn't recommend going to them. <laughs> right. well the, the jamaican uh psychic, i don't know you, you uh, gotta like sort through the wizards i mean like <laughs> donald epstein he's definitely uh he definitely is a wizard of sorts and he's definitely bringing something cool so to the it's planet. really interesting but, about donald epstein because and i think i had mentioned this to you briefly um about two weeks before i was connected to you i was connected mm -hmm. to another chiropractor right and um who was put in touch with me through another healer friend of mine. And uh, he's like, listen, I have hired a, a film crew and was wondering if you could get a couple people and you come out and we'll do some interviews and we're gonna do this process that uh, uh, Donald Epstein uh, does. Mm -hmm. And of course, Tony Robbins and Donald Epstein, there's a video out there that's very right. impressive. Tony Robbins- They're buddies. His over the top ways he describes Right. what it did to him, his wife and right. his wife. And it's, yeah, it sounds amazingly outrageous. Right. I'm sure it's fantastic, but Tony Robbins has a way of, you know, kind of pushing it to the limit. He amps, yeah, um, amps things up. Yeah. He amps things up. But anyway, so um, I think it's in like three weeks. I'm actually, you know, doing this little mm -hmm. film thing and it's cool. going to be uh, videoed and we're all going to talk about our experiences and um, cool. And again, it's, through a chiropractor and it's, it's, it's subtle touch and it's working mm -hmm. through, I guess the, the chi and I'll, you know, know a little bit more about it in a couple of weeks, but I just think it's so cool that this stuff has kind of presented itself to me. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. And now yeah. that's interesting that they, um, I mean, you know, you, you have a little bit of a skeptic in you. I mean, yeah, a healthy, well, yeah, a healthy I, amount of skeptics. So feel, I do feel like, were you chosen because of that or? Well, I feel like it's it's helpful because I I don't necessarily want to just appeal to the people that already believe this stuff because I don't feel like that's as much of a service. I want to actually appeal to the people that mm -hmm. are skeptical. That are skeptical, yeah, sure. Because I I want to be a part of that crossover, mm -hmm. and I feel like being a, a skeptic 
or, you know, a, a, yeah, sure, I'm going to call myself a skeptic. Um, I feel like being a skeptic allows me to better relate to the other people that are skeptics. And you can be an, you sure. can be a skeptic and also um, try new things and experience new things. Sure. Yeah. Um, because I try a lot of things and, you know, I'm not always open going into them. I mean, I, I'm trying to be more open, but yeah. most of the time they do something yeah. amazing to me. Um, you know, whether some emotion comes up or I feel better mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. um, and, and other times it's like, huge like i mm. it's significant shifts a significant That's awarenesses and it's uh -huh. like holy crap everybody needs to know about this and if right. this doesn't work for one person this thing over here is going to work for for someone else i mean right um you know like acupuncture for me ah, it doesn't do much for yeah. me and yet it works for so <laughs> many people right um energy medicine for me actually does a lot and there's, you know, some more than others. It's really just a matter of my message is for the people just to go out and try something a little different. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. there's nothing to lose, really. What is the, what was, what are the thing or things that have created like huge shifts? Obvious shifts. Yeah. I guess I'm curious. Well, <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the first, uh, and I've talked about this a number of times. I mean, the first weekend um, or the weekend I spent at Tony Robbins, I had done it a number mm. of times before I was crewing. Um, I was supporting his, um, his participants by being a, you know, a crew member. I wasn't mm -hmm. getting paid. There was a couple hundred of us. Um, and it was just kind of, and I've never been experienced, uh, presented with, um, Reiki or energy medicine or muscle testing or anything like that. But th for whatever reason, that particular weekend, and I was in the middle of a divorce and mm. um, real estate was crashing and I was very mm -hmm. heavily invested in real estate. So I was in a was pretty this back bad in 2008. Place. Yes. Ish. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And, uh, and, you know, it was one energetic experience after another. And I, you know, had visions, I had different feelings. I um, tried to debunk muscle testing Mm -hmm. um, I took that as far as I could. That was pretty amazing. Um, people came in and, and lectured about um, and demonstrated um, energetics. And, mm -hmm. and I think the, the big, the last big one, two punch was um, the final day there. I saw this lady doing some energy work on this person. I kind of tapped her on the shoulder. I was like, you know, I, I noticed you're doing energy work. Can you, um, can you, I'm in the middle of a divorce. Can you help mm -hmm. me out? Mm -hmm. And she says to me, I'll give you 30 seconds of my time. And I was like, wow, that's, that's so generous. Um, <laughs> and, but, you know, she probably didn't spend 30 seconds with me. She, um, you know, I met, remember it very clearly. She uh, was in the middle of a, a doorway. She turned around. She looked at me. My eyes got locked with her eyes. Her face started distorting. I got lightheaded and I actually fainted. I fell over. Like, I don't, mm. I don't have a history <laughs> of fainting. That's not something mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Um but there was a chair next to me. I fell over on the chair and I pushed myself back up. And in that moment, all of the weight of all the crap that I had been going through, just it mm -hmm. left my body. Mm -hmm. I, I carry a lot of my stress on my shoulders and it mm -hmm. all went away. And I felt mm -hmm. amazing. I mean, like I mm -hmm. could just skip down the, the hallway mm -hmm. and she probably, probably didn't spend the full 30 seconds with me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was some sort of energetic mm -hmm. something or other wow. through, um, through through the eyes and mm -hmm. i haven't experienced that again i mean i've I mean, experienced other um energetic healings sounds um, like you ran into a different ways sounds like you ran into a master there of sorts oh uh, yeah and and you know that feeling that that feeling uh lasted for months like oh, wow. i didn't have all that junk the divorce mm. you know it was mm. it was all kind of in my mind kind of behind me mm. at least mm. for like a mm. while mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. And that's when I went home and I was like, what, what's this madness that I'm experiencing? <laughs> and I did jump mm -hmm. into medical journals and, mm -hmm. and uh, the biology of belief was mm -hmm. one of the recommended books that I should jump into. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that, you know, helped me out a little bit. And then I got into Reiki and got mm -hmm. attuned and there was a bunch of weird stories in there. And I feel like this is kind of my path and I've fallen into mm -hmm. it. And, um, but I'm still very much wired the way I was and I'm, mm -hmm. And I'm fascinated with everything that's taking place. And 
I, I just want people to kind of step out of themselves and be like, okay, let's, let's give this a whirl. Let's, right. let's try some of this weirdness out. Um, Can I point something out? Yes, please. Uh, you know, like I want to point out that the way that you, you were sort of conditioned for that, like the, you know, you, your life was falling apart. Like uh, yes. you had been opened up to that, yes. you know, and that that's part of the process and that each layer we go through each layer, we, we transform, we have to go through that process. Right. Maybe not, you went through like a big layer, it's like a, a big chunk, but each, you know, little layer that we move through, we have to go through that process. Yeah. You wouldn't have experienced that without having been In that opened up, place. opened yeah. up by that challenge. Yes. That was part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, you know, grateful for that challenge because it brought me to where I am. Mm -hmm. But, uh, cool yeah well listen um is there anything else that you wanted to add this has been fantastic well yes thank you so much for having me on and i appreciate what you're uh what you're doing um uh you know i just want to let people know that <clears throat> i guess life and their bodies are not screwing with them whatever you're encountering in life whatever you're feeling the challenge the pain that is the window that is the solution to trust that life is holding you actually uh, in all of that. It's not something to fight against, if possible, that life is transforming you through that, through that stuff and to try to face that with an open heart. You will, if you can give it enough kind attention, if you can give the pain, your challenge, enough kind attention, you will see, you'll come out on the other side and you'll see a sort of process that you went through. Um, and um, yeah, if people are interested in working with me, uh, you can find me at biosoulintegration.com. And I do do online people online work with folks. It's a version of the work that I do hands-on. I'm navigating the river of chi. I'm tapping into the field. I'm uh, asking the right questions at the right time, uh, encouraging people to give uh, permission for what's happening to happen. And I also incorporate something called brain spotting, which is a brain based tool for unraveling the, the packets of information that get stored in our bodies as a result in our brain, as a result of trauma. Uh, and you can find that too at BioSoul. You can find my book at biosoulintegration.com. Look under offerings and you'll find uh, either hands-on work or online work. So fantastic yeah hey man it's really been a pleasure yeah thanks for having me that was fun